إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد اتقوا الله عباد الله فهي حرث الدنيا وحساد الآخرة قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله والتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Our brothers and sisters, the more we engage with the dunya, our religion gives us rules and principles. The fuqaha have a principle and a rule, al-wasail laha ahkam al-maqasid. Meaning if something is permissible, the results of that thing which is permissible is also taken into consideration. If the end is a good one and a positive one, then it has a place in our religion. And if it isn't, then it doesn't. My brothers and sisters, we have another principle. All forms of sports and games and hobbies in its origin, all of them are permitted. But the person who is healthy and spends his time looking after himself is better than a person who is not healthy and doesn't spend his time looking after himself. In a hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, Al Mu'min al Qawi, the strong Muslim, strong in his Iman, but the ulama have said strong in all senses of the word. Khairun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al Mu'min da'if is better and more beloved to Allah than a believer who is weak, weak in his Iman, but also weak in his body. Khair, even though all of them have some goodness. My brothers and sisters, these two principles explain one another. So it's sad now that games and sports have more to do with entertainment and not exercise anymore. People have even mixed religion with sports and games. Whereas the Sharia has a different outlook. The Sharia encourages activities and games and sports which will benefit a person but by looking at the end result. For the purpose of benefit from the action so that the person himself will benefit. But if the game is not a sport anymore if it is not something that people are benefiting from anymore, then the Muslim must be wise. For example, we have a hadith which is reported by Ibn Hibban and has been made sahih by Shaykh al-Bari rahimahullah that the Prophet sallallahu recommended walking as a sport, as a way of remaining healthy. So on one expedition, the companions, they came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and they were complaining of fatigue. So he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to them, Istainu bin nasl. Seek assistance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the fatigue that you face in your body by fast-paced walking. فَإِنَّهُ يَقْتَعَ عَنْكُمُ الْأَرْضِ وَتَخِفُّونَ لَهُ If you do this, you will find that you will have an increase in energy. The companions, they started to do this. They started walking faster as a means of exercise. And they won the battle. What was the battle that they were complaining about moments before fatigue? It was the Fat of Makkah. The Prophet ﷺ had companions come to him before the liberation of Makkah and they were complaining of fatigue. And the Messenger of Allah ﷺ encouraged exercise and when they listened to what he said ﷺ, they had enough energy to overcome the enemy and make Makkah into a land of Tawheed again and remaining until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. My brothers and sisters, swimming archery are some of the things that the Messenger of Allah and our religion has recommended. In a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Urmu Bani Ismail, O oh, descendants of Ismail, shoot archery. For inna abakum kana ramia, because your father Ismail used to shoot. Horse racing, wrestling, grappling, all of these are sports and hobbies that a person can benefit from because the Sharia endorses it because of the end outcome. But if it's not a sport anymore, then the Muslim must exercise caution. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah in Fath al-Bari, he says about wrestling, وَاللَّعِبْ بِالْحِرَابْ لَيْسَ لَعِبًا مُجَرَّدًا Practicing wrestling and grappling and things to do with martial arts he says, Rahimahullah, 
this is not just a mere sport. It is not play and it is not entertainment. بَلْ فِيهِ تَدْرِيبُ الشُّجْعَانِ Rather, the Sharia supports it because of a purpose. Through wrestling and grappling and the likes, it creates bravery and confidence. The point, my brothers and sisters, is that in Islam, if there is a physical, bodily benefit, then the Sharia endorses it. But after this, my brothers and sisters, the scholars say that there are guidelines for sports and games and hobbies. Number one, in order for that sport or game to be permissible, it must be something which is actually beneficial. If it is not beneficial, then it needs to be reviewed. Number two, these games and hobbies can't involve anything which is haram. Gambling, music, uncovering of the aura, hitting on the face, exalting the players, bowing to one another, having hatred for your brother because he follows a different team. Number three, they have said it must not distract a person from the wajibat or the worship of Allah. If a tournament is taking place, my brothers and sisters, and your favorite team is playing, and you are now distracted from something which is wajib, then this becomes haram. And number four, there has to be a balance. There can't be extravagance. There can't be extravagance in your time. There can't be extravagance in the money that you spend. And there can't be extravagance in the way that you talk about this topic. What is the evidence for all of this, my brothers and sisters? In a hadith which has been reported by Sunan Ibn Majah, by Ibn Majah in his Sunan, and it has been made Sahih by Shaykh al-Albani, the Prophet wasallam once saw a companion and he was playing with birds. He was playing with pigeons. And he spent a lot of time playing with these birds and pigeons. But in the end of it, there was no real benefit. So he said wasallam, about a companion, shaytanun yatba'u shaytana. This man is a shaytan and he is following a shaytan. How can a companion be called a shaytan, my brothers and sisters? The meaning given by Sayyuti and others is that this man, he is not a shaytan, he's a companion. But he was influenced by the shaytan. He was influenced by the shaytan and he was following something which had no benefit following a shaytan. My brothers and sisters, preserve your religion because life is not a game. And a description that has been given to those people who rejected Islam and rejected your Prophet wasallam. one of the main reasons is that they believed that the life had no other purpose except for joke and play. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them. الَّذِينَ اتَّخِذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَهُمْ وَلَعِبَا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا وَمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن السنة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو غفور رحيم الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اعلموا يا أيها المسلمون بأنه خير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد أما بعد ما brothers and sisters a football world cup is taking place and a Muslim must know that the religion has a stance on games and sports a person has to be careful not to mix physical exercise with aqidah, with politics, and with acts of worship. So for example, Ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah was asked, can a player make sujood al-shukr after scoring a goal or winning a game? He says rhetorically, rahimahullah, hal ghalaba fariqiq ni'matun tastahiq shukr has your team attained a favor from Allah which deserves sujood al-shukr? My brothers and sisters, today we also see sports being mixed with religion and this, this distorts the idea of what a Muslim should be. The practicing Muslim has now been distorted because sports and entertainment have been mixed with religion. Hence, what is the ruling on watching football games? You will find that the ulama have warned against them. Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, he said, أَنَّهَا مُشْقَلَةً عَنِ الْخَيْرِ 
ومشغل عن الصلوات في الجماعة والذي ينبغي تركها Watching football diverts a person from doing what is beneficial People don't pray the salah in jama'ah So what a person should do is leave it Now based on the guidelines that we have said We see a balance from him rahimahullah He said If a person watches some games And it doesn't consume a lot of his time and the person's aura is covered, the person that he is watching. And there are any other things which are haram, such as music and free mixing. And he prays properly in the masajid. Had, this, had these guidelines been met, then watching them would be more relaxed. But then he says, Rahimahullah, with his insight, as if he was alive today, Rahimahullah. But the reality is that people have become busy with watching football games and it's become a fitna. What to do is salawat and people don't pray properly. My view is watching these games is haram. The harm in watching these games is intense. And the benefit is non existent. وَإِنْ كَانَ فِيهَا خَيْرٌ And even if there was good in it, فَهُوَ قَلِيلٌ جِدًّا Then it is only very slight. Then we have Ibn Uthaymin, Rahimahullah, said, إِنْ هَذَا إِنْ سُلِمَتْ مِنْ شَنْ الْآخِرِ He goes on to talk about, Rahimahullah, that there are many things that come as an obstruction for a person's iman in watching football games. And then he says, even if all of these things, for argument's sake, a person was safe from, he said, it leads to other problems. يقوم في قلب متفرج تعذيم لا كافر مثلا he says a person will end up idealizing players and this will then have an effect on the youth who they take as role models hence he says رحمه الله ابن أثيمين فالذي أنصح به what I advise أن يحرسوا على أوقاته that you benefit your time in doing things which are good فإن الأوقات أغلى من الأموال because the time you spend in doing good deeds is more important than your wealth and feeling good about your team. My brothers and sisters, having hobbies and playing games and having sports, all of these things are endorsed in the religion. But they are endorsed in the religion because of the benefit that they bring. If there is harm, then realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants goodness for you and that he wants to protect you from things which doesn't befit a believer. قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ودمر أعداءك وأعداء الدين ربنا ذنبنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم جلنا لك من الموحدين اللهم جلنا لك من المخبتين اللهم جلنا لك من الأوابين منيبين اللهم اجلبنا وذرياتنا أن نعبد الأسلام ربنا إنهن أدنلن كثير من الناس اللهم كرح لين كفر والفسوق والإسيان وجلنا من الراشدين ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت وهاب اللهم اشف مرضانا وآف مبتنانا وارحم موتانا وهدي شبابنا يا رب العالمين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون